Hey everyone, it's caffeine scientist, author, and speaker, Green Eyed Guide here. Today we're going to talk about a pretty weighty subject, which is how much caffeine does it take to kill me? Um, so this is a subject that often comes up when there are new stories about people suffering heart attacks or certain side effects due to energy drinks. And people often wonder, are energy drinks more dangerous than coffee or tea or other forms of caffeine. So today we're going to look at how much caffeine does it take to kill you and what does that look like whether you're drinking coffee or tea or energy drinks. All right, so before we dive right in, let me introduce myself for those of you who don't know me. I'm Danielle Robertson Rath. I wrote this book, Are You a Monster or a Rockstar? A Guide to Energy Drinks. And I wrote this book, which has a name that I won't say out loud in case there are children present. Okay, so let's talk, let's talk about caffeine killing people. All right, so first question, um, what, like what exactly does that mean? So really in order to understand this question and how we can even approach this question, we need to talk about something called the LD50, which is essentially the dosage that is lethal for 50% of the population. So let's say this pile of coffee beans here represents the U.S. population. Well, some people are more sensitive to caffeine and might die with a smaller dose. The LD50 is the dosage it would take to kill about half of the, of the population. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Six out of 12 of my coffee beans. So half of them have died from a particular dosage. The rest of them are still hanging on. Maybe it will take a stronger dosage. Maybe this person is immortal and would never die. <laughs> but essentially, the LD50 is the dosage it takes to kill 50% of the population. At the LD50, the people that are still alive might not be feeling too good. They might still be feeling sick, but they're still alive. So for caffeine, the LD50 is about, uh, let's see, it's 150 milligrams per kilogram of body weight, which essentially equates to about 10 grams. So for most people, 10 grams is gonna be the lethal dose. Okay, so what does that actually look like? Let's look at some popular beverages. So because energy drinks are so often criticized for being more lethal than coffee, let's look at the stereotypical energy drinks. I'm gonna go with the big three, which is Red Bull, Monster, and uh, okay, I guess that's technically bang now. <sighs> okay, so how many cans of this would it take to give you this? Well, with bang, which has 300 milligrams per can, it takes around 30 cans. With Monster, most flavors have about 180 milligrams per can, so it takes about 60 cans. And Red Bull, the most feared of all, because it only has about 80 milligrams per can, would actually take around 120 cans. Huh, okay, well that beats some of the stereotypes, I'm sure. So essentially, it's important to look at the caffeine content. When people talk about energy drinks being more dangerous than coffee or tea, well, that may be true if you're looking at energy drinks with an extremely large dosage, but not all energy drinks fit the stereotype. It's really important to look at how much caffeine you're drinking and not just the source of caffeine. Case in point, if you were a coffee drinker, there's something called Death Wish Coffee, which has about the same amount of caffeine as Bang. So it would only take about 30 cans of this coffee to kill you. Yes, this is coffee, but there is such a thing as too much coffee. With Monster, there's a drink that I like quite a lot called Vibal Energy Tea. It has around 200 milligrams of caffeine, so it would take about 60 cans. Even though this is tea and not a stereotypical energy drink, we're still looking at the dosage of caffeine and saying that we can have about 60 servings. 
before you <laughs> meet your doom. And then Red Bull is equivalent to another energy drink I usually like called Marquee, which has about 100 milligrams of caffeine. So essentially, the dosage of this is small enough you can have 120 cans of this Marquee before you kick the bucket. So it really doesn't matter whether it's coffee or tea or energy drinks. It matters the dosage of caffeine in whatever you're drinking. So this is essentially death we're talking, but first, before you get there, you're still going to feel pretty sick. Most people feel symptoms of caffeine overdose around one gram. So way before you get to this 10 gram lethal dose, you're usually feeling not too hot. It's usually a warning sign well before you get the 10 to the 10 gram mark that uh, you're in trouble. So essentially, If one gram is enough to feel sick, then this is, for those of you who aren't familiar, this is 1,000 milligrams, but it's only 200 milligrams that you're recommended to have at one dose. This is the max an adult can have at one time. This is the maximum dosage that someone can have at one time to avoid side effects of caffeine, including jitters, nausea, insomnia, all of those common caffeine side effects, dehydration, all of those happen if you go above this dosage. So even that's well below the one gram mark. So it would take five times the amount of caffeine you're allowed to have at one time before you feel sick and 10 of those before you feel like you're actually going to die. So in summary, I've said this a million times on this channel, but it's not necessarily energy drinks that are the danger here. It's extremely high amounts of caffeine, whether that comes from an energy drink or from a coffee or from boosted tea or whatever. Too much caffeine is too much caffeine, regardless of where it comes from. That's why I recommend for people to have things that have low amounts of caffeine in them. Caffeine that's carefully calibrated, caffeine that allows you to moderate your intake all day long. If you have these extremely high doses of caffeine, then you can very quickly go from okay to not okay to really not okay. So it's important to consume small amounts of caffeine at a time. Do not have extremely large doses of caffeine all at once because this doesn't give your body a chance to react and give you this warning sign that things are, are wrong. Well, I hope this demonstration was helpful. I hope this clarifies some of the things you may have seen on the news. Essentially, there are documented deaths of caffeine pills, coffee, espresso shots, co uh, caffeine powder, energy drinks. And yes, some of these overdoses, some of these documented deaths are associated with people that had less than one gram, but they are extremely rare. So it's important to know your caffeine and to keep your caffeine in moderation. If you would like help tracking your caffeine and you need help moderating your intake based on your level of fatigue, then you can go to thegreeneyedguide.com slash freebies to get your energy drink report card or your, um, your fatigue audit. Both of those freebies will help you better control your caffeine intake. And there's a lot more references and resources on my podcast, the Caffeine at Midnight podcast. We recently talked about caffeine headaches, weaning, uh, caffeine detox do's and don'ts, side effects that you've had too much caffeine, caffeine and dehydration, and so much more. So I recommend that you check out that Caffeine at Midnight podcast for more information on how to consume caffeine safely without the side effects. I hope this was helpful. Take care.